You know, it's hard to believe that in 2011, it was actually the 10th year of production for the Toyota Sequoia. It had originally come out in 2001, built on the uh, Forerunner chassis, a great chassis, a great off-road type of chassis, but limited in a lot of ways. It's a more luxurious sibling. The Lexus GX470 was a more accommodating version of the vehicle, but it didn't have that full size that American buyers truly crave. In 2011, when they come out with the all-new Sequoia, everything's completely changed. It's one of the largest sport utilities on the market. But uh, despite its large size, it's actually incredibly well-built. It's a stronger chassis, a stronger platform than its predecessor, and one of the best-built sport utilities sold in North America. Now, this is a limited, so it comes with a 5.7-liter engine, putting out a potent 381 horsepower with 401 foot-pounds of torque. If you get the lower end, the SR5 model, uh, that comes out with about 70 fewer horsepower and a commensurate uh, drop in torque as well. So huge power gains when you get up to either the Limited or the Platinum. Platinum being the absolute top of the line. Limited, especially one that's loaded like this, is a, a pretty close second as far as uh, the pecking order in the Sequoia lineup. Now, one of the things you can tell right away uh, with the Limited is that it has 20-inch wheels, where the SR5s only have 18-inch uh, wheels. SR5s come with a thing like a manual uh, tailgate, cloth interior, and the like. Limited comes with uh, leather interior, power lift gate, and a lot of other features. And let's take a look around. We'll take a look at this particular car. This one has just 20,000 miles for 2011. Not too shabby here late in 2013. And the uh, this car was traded in on a new QX56. I would say the Infiniti QX56 as far as quality and size and style and even price point to some measure is probably the single greatest competitor to the Sequoia. Uh, a lot of people just prefer the personality of one versus the other, but they're actually uh, very, very comparable. If you're looking at one, you'll probably enjoy looking at the other. This one looks quite nice all the way around. The uh, great on the outside, great on the inside. You notice the JBL synthesis sound, so upgraded stereo system uh, on the limited packages. And then you also have airbags for your knees up in front. In fact, you'll have some more airbags in the back that the lesser models don't have in the third row seat. Now, tons of room in the front, and of course, tons of room in the back as well. At six feet tall, you have all the space in the world. Now, this one has uh, pretty much every option that you're going to be able to get on a limited. The two biggest ones are going to be uh, navigation and drop-down DVD, and this one has them both. The other one is you can get uh, quad captain's chairs. We have discovered at Infinity of Kirkland that the bench seat on our own product is the more popular way to go. Uh, whether or not the, the style works for you or what have you, the, the sheer ability to have eight passengers instead of seven passengers is just brings a lot of value. You can't get around the fact if you just need eight passengers in your car. The other thing is, I like my our sport utility. We like to sit our kids three across in the middle row. Sometimes we'll use the third row seat, but having a bench allows you to have three kids in the back. That makes it really easy getting in and out when you're at school, at the mall, at the grocery store, what have you. And the uh, we just prefer it that way. Whether or not you prefer it that way is up to you. But if you do get the platinum edition of these, that's going to be seven passengers for sure. They come exclusively in the quad orientation. Now, as I said before, it's a power lift gate. So all limiteds have a power lift gate where the SR5s do not. And then it's fairly spacious behind the uh, third row seat, so the you can actually fold these down with the push of a button. And it is a 60-40 setup. That's the ideal setup because sometimes you'll have a need for just a couple of extra seats in the back, but you'll want that extra storage space. Soccer balls, soccer cleats, Costco runs, uh, winter getaways, the uh, you name it. There's just certain times where you have a lot of gear as well as a lot of people in your car. And having uh, some flexibility with the seating orientation does pay dividends. It's also a real tall cavernous space here, so not just deep, but you, you actually can put quite a lot of gear if you don't mind stacking it up a little bit. But then again, the ability to fold down the seat is a game changer. Come take a look around the passenger side. 20,000 miles, everything looks great on this car. Never been smoked in, no dogs or anything like that. The seats are on tracks in the back, so it is easy to jump into the back seat. The uh, Your kids will thank you. A lot of these uh, bigger sport utilities are actually really cumbersome to get into that third row seat. Not the Sequoia, it's actually really easy. Come on inside, let's take a look inside.
So again, this has the 5.7 liter engine, so that's the biggest engine that Toyota offers. And again, 381 uh, horsepower, 401 foot-pounds of torque, so it's uh, very powerful, very easy to drive. The Sequoia, as a rule, is one of the easier to drive big sport utilities that's out there on the market. This one also has heated seats, again, that navigation system, nice stereo system. There was a time I met a girl of a different kind. Locking differential, tow haul mode. This one is set up with a tow receiver. This car is loaded. It's a great color combination. It's in beautiful condition. It has very low miles. If you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to drop me an email anytime. Joe T at Infinity of Kirkland. Or just call me anytime as well. Uh, Joe Tunney here at Infinity of Kirkland, 425-821-1600.